Alright guys, I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and I'm hoping you enjoy this video. This is going to be 10 games that I'm thankful for and why and how they shaped me on the gamer and game collector that I am today. So, sit back and we'll talk about these 10 games that I'm thankful for. Alright, first up on the list... Um, didn't want to get out my big box of this because it's actually in storage. I'm out of room. But my first game will be Seventh Guest. For those of you that have never tried this game or played this game, I highly recommend it. Um, I know you can get it on the old PCs. Um, you can get it on um, GOG.com. And you can also, I remember you could buy it once on Android and Apple. Um, Philips CDI also has a copy, but anyways, get back to the game. It is a, oh, adventure-style horror game, click and point. But this game, back in the day, I think I was about 13 or 14 when I bought this. My first big PC I had. It shaped me in the adventure-style style, uh, style games. I had never played nothing like this. It was different. I remember staying up late one night and I was playing through it. And one of my most fond memories of it, I was in the basement maze trying to figure it out. Lights off, big room. I had headphones on so nobody would hear me. Walked around that first wrong corner. It's like feeling lonely. And I was like, wow, um, kind of. I had to turn the lights on and play the game. Like I said, I was still a teenager. But, this game, if you haven't played it, the story behind it, the animation, it's great. Um, they did make a sequel called The Eleventh Hour. It's also a decent game. And I know a Kickstarter program did get funded, and they're almost done with the 13th Doll, which will be the third series of this game. I have already um, I joined the Kickstarter, and I will be receiving that sometime when they get it done. But, that's... My first game that I'm thankful for, and just to remind you, none of these are in any order that's not a top 10, not anything. These are just all the ones that I'm thankful for. My wife has handed me these at random. Next up will be Resident Evil 2 on the PlayStation. Now, folks, this game here, this got me into my love of Resident Evil. I had no clue what Resident Evil was. Um, I was at a buddy's house, and a, a guy from California that we hadn't hung out with for a while had been over, and he goes, you guys have got to play this. So we went to the video store, we rented it, and I sat down in one evening and just sat there, and I just went all the way through the game in one setting. Loved it, loved the story, loved everything about it. Um, it was just a great game. And um, I, the story, the, the way that you could take it and go, you know, go from one character to the other. And the stories were a little different, but they still had the same quality. Um, it was just an awesome game. I mean, it got me started in the horror survival, the survival horror genre. If it wasn't for Resident Evil, I wouldn't be into the Silent Hills, wouldn't be into the Dead Space, Dead Island, I mean, all the horror games that I am into, but that got me started, and that's why I'm a huge Resident Evil collector. You see my other videos, you know how much, um, you know how much I love the horror genre. Next up is... I know everybody's going to say this is a cliche. I know some people just do not agree that Final Fantasy VII is not their favorite. And it is my favorite, but it's also the one I'm thankful for. Because when the PlayStation came out, I was not a fan of the PlayStation. I tried it at a couple stores. Thought the load times were ridiculous. I, I remember say, telling my buddies, there's no way that I'm ever going to purchase a PlayStation. Then commercials and reviews started dropping for this game. And I thought the 
the cinematic trailers and the footage was just so beautiful. I thought, like, that looks like a game that I really could get behind. I really want to play. I actually found a copy of this at a um, local game store that somebody had traded in. It was still factory sealed. Um, honestly, the the game store was in the same strip mall as a Target, so I'm thinking somebody probably stole it, walked out, walked down the street, and sold it to that guy. But I didn't care. I got it for like ten dollars less than what it would have been. Um, I was happy, ecstatic. I bought that game, and then I ran down into Target and bought my PlayStation. So I actually bought that before the PlayStation. So if it wasn't for that game. I don't even know if I would ever bought a PlayStation back in those days. And thanks to that, I played Resident Evil. Thanks to that, I, I, I started trying all different PlayStation games. And like I said, I, I wouldn't have played Metal Gear Solid. I wouldn't have played my Destruction Derby. I loved too, so much on the PlayStation. But Final Fantasy VII, I'm thankful for that because it got me into the Sony PlayStation. Next up. Oh... Now, I chose the PlayStation 2 copy of this because it's it got me into my love of arcade racing. And that, I know a lot of people just say Part 3 is the best, and I agree, it, it is the best of the series. But Burnout 2, Point of Impact. I love this game. I have it on GameCube, I have it on Xbox, I have it on PlayStation 2. But this here, the PlayStation 2 copy... This is what got me into this, the arcade racing, the, the fast paced racing, the crash, the crash scenario that you can do in this, it, it, it just got me into the racing genre. Um, I'm th really thankful that this is where I started my racing. Oh. Now. What most of you don't know is, growing up, I had an Atari because my parents had one. Um, then as I got younger, as I got older, um, I did eventually get an NES. And my parents, throughout my childhood, said that I didn't need any other system. I had a Nintendo. So I skipped the age group where kids were getting a Super. I didn't get a Sega growing up. So when I got old enough and got out of high school, got my job, my first real factory job, whatever, I decided that I was going to buy a used Super Nintendo. And what I'm really thankful for about that, when the Super Nintendo genre, is Super Mario RPG and Legends of the Seven Stars. This here is like my favorite Super Nintendo game. I've played through this game, I couldn't tell you how many times, I love the story, um, it, it just, the way that they did this game, it, the mixture of the characters, the story, the art, RPG elements, I had never played a, an RPG quite like this at that time, and I'm just thankful for it because this really got me behind the Super Nintendo, because I didn't have one growing up, this helped me, I remember buying this and it's like, like, what is this? And I think I'd already played Final Fantasy VII, but I played through this, and I was like, man, this is really good. The whole idea of Bowser, you being able to play as Bowser, and Bowser being a good guy, it, it blew my mind. So, that's why I'm thankful for that one. Next on my list is a game that um, kind of started my obsession with a hundred percenting things and trying to find everything out there and that would be the Simpsons hit and run um, I bought this back on the GameCube I know I sold it years ago this is another copy I bought in, or bought sorry uh, Simpsons hit and run uh, I thought it was an amazing game, the open world aspect of it, where you could go just about anywhere. Um, I was obsessed with collecting everything there was. I remember getting on game FAQs constantly and looking for walkthroughs and how to do things, and I got so tired of getting on there, 
I just got my PC and printed it out the whole entire walkthrough. I actually have it stapled, still sitting on a shelf over there. Because if I ever go back through this game, because I have lost my save file, I'll sit there and I'll try to 100% it again. I really enjoyed playing this game. It, it was it was just different. It was just new to me. Uh, I never got into the Grand Theft Auto series, so this to me, I guess, was my Grand Theft Auto, because people said it's kind of like a Grand Theft Auto... Um, with the Simpsons, I guess, is what a lot of people have heard say about it. But, you know, I love Simpsons Hit and Run. Oh. Next. Alright. I said I had an NES growing up, but one game my parents never bought me, Zelda. Um, I'd played it a few times at a couple people's houses, but never had time to sit down and enjoy it. It wasn't until in 1996 when... I got out of high school, got my first job, started had a lot of money coming in. I bought me a 64, and I bought Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. This game here introduced me to Zelda, really for the first time, where I actually get to sit down and, I mean, play hard with it. The open world aspect of this, walking onto the Hyrule Field for the first time, that when everybody says Zelda, this is the game that I go to. This is the game that I remember. Um, I've went through the Master Quest for this. I played it on the 3DS. I mean, and I played it on the GameCube. Doesn't make a difference. If there's a version of this, I will buy it and I will play through it because this game it, it just shaped who I was at the time. All right, and this here, this is the game that this shaped me into battle modes and like most other people the death match on this folks me and my buddies spent hours I'd probably say almost a full year two years doing nothing but every weekend playing over and over and over the death matches on James Bond and you'd think you know you'd get bored with it because you could see everybody else's screen but no we didn't we loved it we, it, it was either between this, Star Fox 64, Perfect Dark. We used to play the wrestling games like crazy. Any four-player game we could find. But we always went back to GoldenEye. I don't know what it was. Just GoldenEye, the deathmatch, the first-person shooter aspect, just the game alone. We just loved playing the game. And I'm just thankful that they really made this game. What's left? Alright, yeah. I, I kind of want to do these next two together because this is um, more into my adulthood. Um, these next two, there are stories behind them. And what we'll do is we'll do this one first. This is Left for Dead. And there's two stories behind this. I'll tell you the first one and we'll go to the second one. Left for Dead saved me with the Xbox brand or the Xbox 360 brand I would bought me an Xbox and I'd rented and played probably about 10 to 20 games and I wasn't impressed um, I didn't like it at first and I was like this system sucks so I um, I took a picture of it set it up and I had it on eBay I was doing, going for a 7 day auction I also had a Gamefly account at the time. And um, this came in the mail. And I was like, well, I haven't sold the Xbox yet. So I got it back out of the box. Hooked it up. I was like, I'm going to try Left 4 Dead. And this game here, the multiplayer part, the cooperative part of how you play this game, that even the computer has to help you or you have to help the computer to try it. Survive the way they have this play played sold me. I took my eBay auction down. I kept my Xbox 360. I played this game to death. And then my wife, watching me play it, thought, hey, that looked fun. So my wife, who wasn't even a gamer, who had owned a Nintendo back in the day when she was a kid, but 
didn't really care for video games. This game here made her a gamer. She's not a hardcore gamer like me. She don't play just about everything. I'll turn on any game and play it and try it. But this game here, it sucked her in. It sucked my, my daughter in. All three of us were playing this game before not too long. We were all we all played the online campaigns where you played against each other, plus the ability when you're um, playing as a zombie in the online. Oh, that was just it was just new, unique, and just awesome to us. Um, this this here saved me with the Xbox 360. If it wasn't for this, I would have sold mine and never looked back. So, I really am thankful for Left 4 Dead. And the other thing I am thankful for is the Mario Party series, but in general, Mario Party 8 when the Wii came out. This um, united me and my family. We loved to sit around the TV. We played Mario Party 8 to death. You'd sit around and like a family game night, and you'd sit there and play, and you'd yell and scream at each other. My daughter would storm off because we'd steal stars or steal coins, win a mini game too many times. But it, it was an awesome time. It was just fun. And if it wasn't for the Mario Party, it wouldn't be so many family memories, family memories around the video games that I, you know, I'm really thankful for having those. And that's 10, right? And that's all 10. So, hey, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, happy Thanksgiving again. Leave a like, a subscribe, comment, please share it around. Um, you guys have a happy Thanksgiving. Go get your best. Go get your Black Friday shopping done tonight, tomorrow, whenever you're gonna do it. I did all mine online. So, um, catch you back again here real soon. Um, I'm out writing about traveling right now. I'm gonna try to do some game hunting. I'm gonna try to get some footage. Maybe do an on-site location and shoot where I'm at. But. Got Retro Game Treasure and Video Game Monthly coming up here real soon. And I'll catch you guys back again here then. Thanks for watching.